Welcome, everyone. <laughs> well, it is uh, a great honor uh, to welcome you here today for one of our great ceremonies uh, that the City of Columbus has, one of the great honors that can be bestowed upon anybody. And so having it here at the Columbus Foundation, which is unusual, hasn't happened uh, ever before, uh, is a great pleasure for us to be associated in any way with uh, such a great uh, ceremony. You know, last week, I would assume many of you know, many of you got many emails associated with it, uh, we had something called the Big Give in this region. And uh, people were very, very generous. They supported the people who in this community can use the support. They not only were generous themselves, but they were participatory in the building of a better community. And so both things, I think, are worthy of celebration. And so it's not even a week from the, the big give. And I'd like to use that theme to just say, uh, on behalf of the Columbus Foundation, what a big honor uh, <laughs> it is uh, to have you here today, to have these honorees celebrated here today. And by way of introduction, uh, to have the great Andy Ginther, who I was really depending on not wearing a tie. <laughs> so he walks into the room. Now, how many times have you seen him wear a tie? All the right times, all the right times. But I was thinking maybe you wouldn't do the tie. I want to defer to the boss. And uh, so here I am in my, uh, my embarrassing informality. <laughs> But in any event, I just want to say uh, uh, in front of all of you and anyone who may be seeing this later, what great respect we have for uh, Mayor Andy Ginther. Uh, what a difficult job it is to lead a, a, a city of our size, of our dynamics, and of our growth, uh, to seize opportunities, but to share opportunities and be committed to the full range of the people in this community. He does it with the plum. He does it with skill. He does it with finesse and he does it with empathy. So ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Andy Ginther. Well, thank you, Doug, and thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, a great day uh, in the city of Columbus. I am thrilled that so many elected officials and faith leaders have joined us today. Uh, my colleagues on council, we have members of the judiciary, uh, my brother, Mayor of Grove City Ike Stage, has joined us, and I know that uh, seeing Dr. Booth and First Lady Ross and uh, Pastor Tucker and all the great leaders from the faith community that are here today uh, to celebrate, uh, I'm grateful for that. And to Doug, thank you for hosting us here at the Foundation, uh, a wonderful place uh, where our community convenes to celebrate service and investing in our neighbors. Special welcome to our inductees, their families, and friends. It is events like this that remind me of what makes Columbus so special. It's people. The Columbus Hall of Fame honors outstanding individuals who through exemplary accomplishments have gained recognition for themselves and have brought credit to our great city. We have honorees in just about every professional field from artists to athletics to aviation. Past recipients include Amina Robinson, one of the country's most prolific artists, and Ohio State football great and two-time Heisman Trophy winner, Archie Griffin. In all, there are 59 people in the Columbus Hall of Fame. 205 years later, 59 people in the Hall of Fame. After our ceremony today, there will be 63. We're here to honor our newest inductees into the city of Columbus Hall of Fame, Leslie A. Bostic, Janet E. Jackson, Bishop Jerome H. Ross Sr., and Fran Ryan. And to say a few words about our first inductee is my great pleasure to introduce our friend, our fellow in service at the state, and one of the cool things about Herschel Craig and I, is we both worked for Les Bostic at some point in our career. 
So it is now my honor to introduce our representative, State Representative Herschel Craig. As the founding executive director of Buckeye Ranch, formerly Buckeye Boys Ranch, for 40 consecutive years, Les has dedicated his adult life to aiding troubled children and families. Les was one of six children from a working class family, born and reared in a farming and textile community in the Piedmont region of North Carolina. He holds a Bachelor's of Science degree and a Master's of Social Work degree from Richmond Professional Institute of College of William and Mary, as well as a PhD from The Ohio State University. Starting with a dream, Les created a model residential campus with a nationally respected program for the care and treatment of emotionally, emotionally behaviorally, and mentally challenged children, children and, and adolescents. It is no small measure of pride that the ranch has been able to raise private funds to build a truly outstanding campus and increase the land mass for 75 acres to approximately 100 acres without creating debt or obtaining a single, single line of credit. During the latter stage of his leadership, Les raised over $4 million to fully fund the construction of the Hughes Family Life Center, uh, the Kroger's Equestrian uh, Therapy Center, and the Mary Dunn Administration Center. In a major restructuring of the ranch in 1997, Les was appointed president and CEO of both a new holding company and the Buckeye Ranch Foundation, where he assumed a leading role in establishing a board of directors for the foundation consist, consisting of 40 or more members. In 1997, he engineered the acquisition of Square One for youth, which increased the number of children served by the ranch on a daily basis from 200 to 400, adding over 100 foster uh, treatment homes to the comprehensive care system of the ranch. Following his retirement in 2000, Les formed Making Connections, a nonprofit corporation, to continue op opening doors of opportunity for disadvantaged children with severe dental, facial, or other disfigurements. All of that is just a fraction of his accomplishments. Les has assumed a leadership role in Central Ohio community and has received numerous recognitions for his exemplary service uh, to this society. In 1997, Les was honored with the Columbus Foundation Award. This award recognized outstanding vision and achievement and is presented annually to individuals that have made a significant difference in the quality of life in their community. Les has twice been the recipient of the Governor's Award to Ohioans. First, in 1974, he was honored with the award by Governor John Gilligan. And in 1998, Governor Vonovich presented Les with the award. This award is the highest honor that the Ohio governor can confer upon any individual or group. Les has received uh, the 2001 Award for Outstanding Community Service to Columbus and Franklin County, presented by the Alcohol, Drug Abuse, and Mental Health System. Les is the father of two children. Why don't they stand? Why don't y'all stand up? Lisa and Parole of Washington, D.C., and Jeff Bostick of Seattle, both of whom are here today. But let me add a personal note to this as well. The book of Micah lifts this query it raises this interrogative, what does the Lord require of thee? The word comes back to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before the Lord. Less among our successes over these 45 years, we have had some dark days in our lives. 
But through it all, there has been no one with whom I have loved more and valued your friendship more in this world. Thank you for your extraordinary, uh, extraordinary commitment to service and to this community and certainly your dedication to your family uh, and to be my friend. And as I close, dreamer, continue to dream on. Know that I love you and we are praying always with you. I love you, your brother from another mother. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Craig. Leslie A. Bostic, it is now my pleasure to induct you into the City of Columbus Hall of Fame. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> uh, I've received two great awards before this one and many great awards. I thought when I received the great honor of having been, uh, had the, the sword over my shoulder to receive a knighthood in New York City with 20 people having been selected from all over the world. So I thought, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, and number two, to have had the great pleasure of serving and being honored by the Central Ohio uh, USO were following my 40 years at the ranch, joining the, the USO board, then serving for three years as president of that board. I thought those were probably the greatest awards I had received, and now back home here, Grove City and Columbus and Central Ohio, to receive this award, there is for me no greater honor. Thank you, Mayor. I, I do have a few other remarks. <laughs> you burned uh, the right. <laughs> thank you. I have a group of women here today that have loved me and I have loved them. They represent the Buckeye Ranch Service Board members, many of whom were with me when I first, in 19, what was it, 60, 1960, uh, had the honor of being selected by this body of people, then called the Women's Juvenile Service Board. They were the spinoff of the Columbus Boy Choir that was stolen away in the night to move to Princeton, New Jersey, because they were offered a lodging in a wonderful mansion, plus housing, food, etc. 
uh, that group shifted its emphasis and created what we named the Buckeye Boys Ranch. And from that day forward, this group of women, about 200 in number, many with uh, wealthy uh, means that could help us get started. We launched the land, built the first cottage, 1961, and from that day forward, this group has maintained its strength. And I would like to ask each of you, service board, to stand up. Next, I have been honored with <clears throat> so much love coming out of friends that have stayed with the ranch. Not one could exceed what Donald G. Dunn has accomplished for the ranch. He, having founded Plaskalite Inc. over on the south uh, end of German village area 50 years ago or more. He was able to take an idea and create one of the incredibly most successful companies, I believe, in America with his great um, ability to serve and have such great products. He is here with us today at 90, is it 94, Don? <laughs> and uh, there he is. <laughs> And he today, uh, like our wonderful Herschel, uh, he and I are almost blood brothers. <laughs> and we make things happen, such as the wonderful tennis event that brought to the campus of the ranch top players in the world of tennis. First year, 1970, we had a weekend event, which Donald accuses me of having uh, overly encouraged him to do this project, but he built the courts. He got George Castus and others to build the stadium. We got Bank One, which was then City National Bank, to paint every bit of the stadium in city blue or whatever they were called and uh, and then Jane young John um, John's wife uh, came out after the painting was done and unfortunately in her white tennis outfit she sits right in a pool of blue <laughs> <laughs> blue paint <laughs> <laughs> and and that was the start. Uh, we had Jimmy Connors, Stan Smith, all the top players in the world to come. And we held on to this for 14 years with all the funds being directed right into the, uh, the ranch's funding base and we gave it up because ATP with Arthur, Arthur Ashe as the first president uh, jacked up the purses on all the tournaments in America, the summer series and we could not take it up to that level. We thought that 
if we lose money, it we can't allow it to come out of the tenants uh, to the ranch pocket. So we decided to hang it up. But it was the top event of the summer season for most tennis enthusiasts and it served us well from all that was related to the promotional part of the branch. So that is uh, my uh, beloved position. So this, this I'm 80, soon to be 84, this is, there is still some adventure left in me, and I'm not sure, but it, life is an adventure, and we have to see it that way. So I, there are others I should recognize, but I'll get thrown out. <laughs> um, but thank you all. God bless you. Oh, I have to say this. We have two people sitting here from from near Dayton area that caused me to step into the the uh, the military base of support without ever having been in the military. But Joe Wells, who flew the longest bombing raid in World War II, uh, was my mentor. He, uh, he took me under his wing, and then through that period, uh, I met his son, who is here with his wife, and he was wounded in Vietnam. So we have father and son who had a tough time with military, but who meant a lot to me in being able to, to live and to help support Joe Wells in the last three years of his Life. When I say support, I mean doing things with him, taking him to the doctor, loving him. And Larry and Colleen here today have stepped up to all to be a good part of my life. So that's the end of my story, <laughs> except for my... on behalf of the tens of thousands of kids and families uh, that you've reached uh, during the first part of your adventure, since you still have more to go, this community says thank you. Our next inductee, Janet E. Jackson, will be introduced by the Deputy Chief of Staff uh, for the City of Columbus, Don Tyler Lee. Janet Elizabeth Jackson, the name given to her by her parents, but she is known across our community by many different names. Trailblazer. Most of us are familiar with the trails she's blazed and the glass ceilings she's shattered all throughout her career. Like when she became a municipal court judge, making her the first African-American female judge in Franklin County history or when she became the first woman and first African-American elected to serve as the Columbus City Attorney. And of course, as the first woman and the first African-American to lead United Way of Central Ohio. But her trailblazing days started much earlier when she was one of the first African-American students to integrate Randolph Henry High School in Charlotte County, Virginia. The word first is not foreign to a trailblazer like Janet Jackson. Some call her a champion of diversity, 
Before it was popular, Janet was unwavering in her commitment to issues of equity, fairness, justice, diversity, and inclusion. During her tenure at United Way, she created affinity groups like Key Club, Pride Council, and the Women's Leadership Council, offering African American, LGBT, and women donors a unique opportunity to elevate issues important to them while simultaneously supporting the work of United Way. Janet also worked diligently to ensure the diversity of her staff and board, but not just the United Way board. Through the creation of Pride Leadership and Project Diversity Leadership programs, she has helped to ensure that those historically underrepresented on nonprofit boards have a seat at the table. But there's another way she's a champion of diversity that may be a little less known in the variety of places she shops. <laughs> she frequents Saks at Polaris and the Cheesecake Boutique in Upper Arlington, and one of her all-time favorites is Big Lots. <laughs> yes, Big Lots. And she talks with great pride about her Big Lots valued customer card. She is a true champion of diversity in all areas of her life. Some call her one of our regulars because she is a regular at Lindy's in German Village where she, where she used to be found courting donors or in some cases holding court at table 20, a regular at the top and a regular at the grill and skillet where you might find her having a good breakfast after her morning workout. Janet is a regular. She is called influential. For the last 14 years, she has influenced individual and corporate donors to invest millions annually in the work of United Way. But her influence has touched a more unlikely group, bartenders. All across this city, bartenders have been influenced by Janet. <laughs> influence to keep a bottle of Gentleman Jack somewhere behind their bar. <laughs> For the just in case, as in just in case Janet Jackson stops by, she is influential. We all know how she feels about her alma mater, so the Wittenberg community calls her a tiger and a member of her, their board of trustees. My very own husband calls her one of his favorite cooks and tells anyone who will listen, and I quote, Janet Jackson makes the best chitlins I ever had. Her family calls her devoted. She is a devoted sister, daughter, aunt, great aunt, and of course mother. If you've been with her for any period of time, you've heard her beam about the love of her life, her son Harrison. She is called a visionary. We know this by the numerous bold steps she's taken throughout her career, including shifting all of the work of United Way to become laser focused on reducing poverty in our community at a time when the word poverty was not part of our community's vocabulary. But in this instance, I don't mean visionary in that sense of the word. Raise your hand if you have ever willingly or unwillingly been coached, mentored, advised, or even reprimanded by Janet Jackson. <laughs> Those of us who raised our hands call her visionary because she has this uncanny ability to see your possibility and your potential before you can even see it. I am forever grateful for the potential she saw to, in me to lead work I didn't know I was capable of leading. There is a tradition at United Way that when a team member leaves, staff submits words to describe the outgoing team member and they're presented with those words beautifully arranged on a United Way branded color frame. The words on Janet's frame won't come as a surprise. Ally, advocate, authentic, bold, career builder, change agent, a force of nature, innovator, inspiring, motivator, no nonsense, passionate times 100, 100% real, wise, someone you want in your corner. Yes, this community knows Janet Jackson by many names, but my special name for her is Boss Lady. <laughs> and even though we no longer have a formal employer employee relationship, this is what I will always call her because I have a feeling she'll be bossing me for many years to come. <laughs> but let me be very clear, my favorite boss now is Mayor Ginther. <laughs> a trailblazer, a champion of diversity, a regular, an influencer, a tiger, a trustee, a cook, a devoted family member, a visionary, someone we all want in our corner, and her newest title, Columbus Hall of Fame inductee, Please help me celebrate my mentor and my friend, Janet Jackson.
vertically challenged is another word we could use. <laughs> Thank you, Don, to my mayor, to the clergy, to my fellow inductees, to community members, and to the best family that anyone could have. It is such a privilege to be with you today, and I am truly humbled. I have had an amazing 12 to 18 months as I was on uh, the Janet Jackson farewell tour <laughs> from United Way. And so you've heard me speak on a number of occasions. But when I was thinking about this event, I was reminded of a conversation that took place close to 30 years ago, and one that greatly influenced my path in this community. You know, I came to Columbus as a young lawyer in 1978, working for Attorney General Anthony uh, J. Brown. And most of you probably don't remember that I left Columbus and I moved to Cleveland to join the law firm. Certainly very challenging work, very interesting work, and to be honest, it paid a lot more money. <laughs> but I was making the decision to move back to Columbus, and I called a dear friend and mentor. I was feeling a little nervous about which path I was going to take as I came back to Columbus. You know, I had this thought in my head that if I went back into the public sector, some people might see that as she couldn't cut it in the private sector. This is what you do when you can't work in that arena. And this very special friend said to me, Janet, don't worry about what others may think. Follow your passion. Follow your heart. And I did that. And I've done that since I moved back. Each and every one of you have probably played a major part uh, in that path that I've been on. Whether you helped me get elected back in 1987 when I wasn't supposed to, when I wasn't supposed to become the Columbus City Attorney, and I think you were there to support me as the president of United Way. You can rest assured now that I haven't asked anyone for money since March. <laughs> so you are free to invite me to your homes or to your dinner parties, and I promise I will not ask you or some unsuspecting guest that I'm talking to to write a check. But one of the things that Dawn touched on has always been important to me and it's more important to me now than ever. Uh, I sometimes say that I'm that old, uh, that person that had the, all of the children, you know, Mother Hubbard, and I feel that I do. But one of the things I want to say, especially to the younger professionals who are in the room and those who aren't in the room because maybe they're still a little too young, with all that's going on across this country, when I am sometimes embarrassed to say that I was ever a politician, and to me, being a politician was not a dirty word. It's so important for us to reach out to our young people, to encourage them to become a part of this process, this democratic process. It's not going to work, and it's not going to change unless we nurture the best and the brightest and to have them pick up the mantle and move forward. Again, I'm humbled, and I'm so pleased. And, Mayor, thank you again for that phone call. And to introduce our next inductee, Bishop Ross, we have our esteemed city attorney, Richard C. Pfeiffer, Jr., Pfeiffer with three S. Three S. And uh, we are so thrilled to have you be here and participate in this. Thank you. We've got to see what makes a team here. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, there's a little church out on West 3rd Avenue called Tridestone Missionary Baptist Church. 51 years ago, it took a risk and brought a young man from Mansfield, Ohio, to be its pastor. Now, when you hear Bishop Ross talk about him getting selected, and I was out there, oh, maybe a couple months ago, there was one woman still there. He pointed out that she voted against him because she thought he was too young. 
Now, I asked both to come up here because what you have before you is a team. Jerome Henry Ross Sr. and his wife, first Patricia Johnson, now Patricia Ross is first lady. They have a son here, Jerome. So the Rosses are parents of two children and grandparents of four. What you need to know, and I see uh, Pastor Tucker is here, who mm -hmm. succeeded Bishop Ross at the church. Uh, how do you talk about people who are people of faith, who are faithful? Uh, 50 years at a church, 50 years of marriage. That's faith. That's faithfulness. But beyond that, what did this short man, <laughs> barely as tall or taller than his wife, but you have heels on, so I guess that's all right. <laughs> Bishop Ross, I heard him preach several times, and he once said to a new preacher who was taking over out at uh, Friendship, you have to preach the word. You preach. What's so outstanding about Bishop Ross is really this. He doesn't rest. In fact, now that he's retired, he still goes out and preaches at various churches. And he always has a message. And one of the messages he gave not too long ago out of Corinthian was a quote from Mark where he talked about going up to the mountain. And he said, I went up to the mountain and God called me. And I'm glad I accepted the call. But it really happened early in his life, up there in Mansfield. 1954, 15 years old, he felt the call and that he pursued. But really before he was 15, as Pat and others would tell you, he used to have church all the time. As a 9, 10-year-old, we'd get kids around and get preached to him. <laughs> now, not only is he known here in Columbus, Ohio for the things that he's done, but he's known internationally. Back in 1994, an organization called the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship was formed. And in 1995, he was ordained a bishop in that organization, an organization now that has over 800 churches. Then in 2012, he formed another organization called Kingdom, Kingdom Connection Fellowship International. Right now, that organization has 100 churches and is in the Bahamas and is in Nigeria. And I think when you think about preachers, you think about the recognition they get from their peer group. Down in Atlanta, there's a school called Morehouse. And that school has an institution called the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers, or more properly known as the Preachers Hall of Fame. In 1998, Bishop Ross was inducted. What does it take to get into the Preachers Hall of Fame? Well, it takes a combination of things. Personal piety, religious civility, keen intellect, and a commitment to faith-bearing witness to various forms of social justice, equality, and human rights. Now, Pat, would you please sit down because we're going to let this person talk alone. <laughs> the last thing I remember him saying when I heard him preach last was, if we would just pray a little more. I give you Bishop Henry Jerome Ross, Sr. <laughs> city, members of city council and other government officials, and to the inductees, uh, they told me I had two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I listened to everyone, and I said, wait a minute here. <laughs> and then, you know, it's kind of dangerous to put a preacher behind a podium. <laughs> and we uh, get kind of antsy, kind of busy, and uh, if something hits me, you'll be here a moment. <laughs> but I want to thank the mayor and those who are responsible for this great honor. In 1966, uh, I came from Mansfield, Ohio. I thought God resided in Mansfield. I thought that was his headquarters. <laughs> uh, but since arriving in Columbus, Columbus has become my home. And I've had many honors, many achievements. But today I'm highly honored and humbled by this award. 
Columbus now is my home. Thank you, Columbus. Now, I'm, I'm going to take some liberty, since others took liberty. <laughs> I am grateful to have my pastor, Dr. Charles Edward Booth, with me today. He pastors in Mount Oliver Missionary Baptist Church. And my successor, who is here today, Elder Dale Tucker, my first assistant in Kingdom Connection Fellowship International, Bishop William Morris, and my good members that are here today. I see the judge, Cocroft, is here. Amen. Okay. So see, I almost went there. <laughs> so, so, something tells me I better stop because I will keep going. But thank you for coming, and God bless you again. Bishop, uh, we are grateful for all that you have done, you and the First Lady, uh, but under your leadership, the impact you've had, not just in Milo Grogan, uh, but on parishioners and neighborhoods throughout our great city. Thank you. Amen. And for our final inductee, uh, we will be joined by Council President Zach Klein to introduce Fran Ryan. I have the opposite problem. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. How y'all doing? Uh, it is my honor uh, to stand here among such a distinguished group of people that are in the audience, but also a uh, distinguished group of inductees. Congratulations to Les, to Janet Bishop, and to our final inductee, uh, a good friend of mine who many in this room know, and that's Fran Ryan. Uh, Fran has had a long-standing commitment to the City of Columbus. She served on Columbus City Council in 1971, served as the council clerk from 1981 to 1987, and if it wasn't enough, she came out of retirement to serve on Columbus City Council again in 2015. Her most notable work on council, if you've ever been to council chambers, is the beautiful restoration that was done. That was all because of Fran Ryan, as well as her funding and founding of the Franklin County Metropolitan Human Service Commission. She is also a woman of firsts. She was the first woman to chair the Franklin County Democratic Party, as well as the first woman to be the director of the Franklin County Board of Elections. She has spent time in service in the federal government as a liaison to the United States Department of Labor, as well as, and this is what we all know her, her advocacy, her zealous uh, commitment, her tireless commitment to seniors as the senior services coordinator in the city of Columbus. This is not the first award that Fran has ever received. She has been the Sunny 95 20 Outstanding Women of 2016, the YWCA Women of Achievement, and the WSNY 20 Women You Should Know. I can say that in 2015, uh, and I think my council member colleagues, many of whom are here, can attest to this, we had an unexpected vacancy on city council. Uh, and it was a six-month stint that we needed someone of high credibility, of loyalty, of dedication, of integrity, to step into that gap to fill an unexpired term for six months. And I can say, that we sat and talked, and very quickly one name came to mind, and that was Fran Ryan. Fran has taken service above self to a new level in her commitment to the city of Columbus, and there isn't a part of the city of Columbus that Fran Ryan has not positively touched and changed for the better. So, ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Fran Ryan.
I just want to say a, a quick word. So Fran and I were uh, at Poindexter last week as we were announcing in partnership with Councilmember Tyson and council members the saving of the last two buildings at Poindexter to devote uh, as an African American History Museum uh, uh, in the years ahead. And there was a young man uh, who had a little more salt than pepper in his hair uh, who came up and talked about this young woman, this young, dynamic, strident woman who headed up the mod squad. <laughs> and so back in the early 70s and mid-70s, first 70s, yes. Fran Ryan, Dead Schenninger, Councilman Roseboro. Yep. Think about that for just a second, particularly me and some of my council members who might not have even been alive at that point. Here was, right. this, here was this woman in the 70s changing the way this community worked and thought about people and put together an exceptionally diverse coalition to change the trajectory of this city over 30 years ago. Pretty amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I guess I have to bring it down a little bit. Wow, that's all I can say. Uh, what a wonderful day, and, and uh, two of the awardees uh, to my left, uh, I have spent some good times with them, with all of them. Each one of them have touched my life. And Mayor, thank you uh, for that call. I appreciate it, even though I didn't know whether it was true news or not. <laughs> <laughs> I look around this room and I see uh, how I got here and what, what made me get here and who helped me get here. There's one gentleman that's missing today, and that was my partner for over 60 years. They passed away in June, and we miss him terribly, but I know in spirit he is right with us today. He was a big part of the things I did, the things I thought about, the changes we made. Both of us uh, were active together in many things, and we had a wonderful ride. And I'm here today to thank my children, if they would stand up, Mary Kay, Terry, Tommy, Rick, Ted, and their wives, and their spouses, Kathy, Kathy, and Kevin. They're all a part of my life, and my grandchildren, Libby, and Joe, where's Joe, and Kyle. And I'm going to be a great grandmother soon. Oh, April, 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 April. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can imagine and look back 30 years, and I remember Mary Kay holding the Bible for me in the city council chambers with Jim Roseboro's son. And there they were together uh, in knee socks and whatever, and Mary Kay with her boofy hair, which she, she hated, hated, wouldn't, wouldn't tell me that to my face, but she hated it. But there they were, five kids, by their mother, taking the oath of office. Can you picture that now, back in the 30 years ago? Uh, some people thought it was odd. Some people thought it was great. But you know what? It made me a much better person because they were right there all the times of everything I have done. When I look in this room, I see the people who welcomed me into Columbus, uh, back in the 50s when I moved here from uh, New York and Pittsburgh, and I went to, I was a junior in high school at St. Mary's in German Village. They welcomed me here to this city that I thought was a country. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I got a hold of this, this city, and because of some wonderful nuns at St. Mary's who said, oh, why don't you just try and go take some journalism? It might make you feel better if you write it all out. And I had a chance to then to work for the Citizen, the Scripps Howard paper, and then on to Ohio State. And I see a couple of my Tri-Delta sisters here from Ohio State. Thank you so much, because with them I learned some leadership and some qualities of getting along with everybody in a house of women. <laughs> the second group of people that I see here were the people who inspired me to go ahead and run for this council seat. Uh, I know that they had some faith in me that I particularly maybe didn't have really that much thinking I could do it, but they did. And I want to thank everybody who was part of those campaigns, both for council and for Congress. And then I think about the people I served with on council. 
the Schettingers, the Petries, the Roseboros, the, the doctors, the, the, the Jerry Hammonds, the people who inspired me to do better every day and who loved this city more than anything in the world. And, and if you can just think about how, and Janet mentioned this, the world today, but those of us who were in that position had a chance to really love the city and to do what we needed to do. And then, of course, I have my new family, my new family of those who care for seniors, those who go out every day and look at what we need and have measured by their skills the work that we have to do, Mayor, in the city for the next how many years? The numbers are growing, and we see every day the, the need and the necessity to take care of our seniors. And this compromises and makes me feel so much better that I can get up every day and think I might be able to just do one more thing. I don't know, Janet, well, I will make that pledge that you did that I won't ask him for money. No <laughs> way! No way! That's not in my matter, okay? But I, I, I've earned that right to ask you for money. <laughs> But there's so many causes out there that I really believe in. And I know my, my daughter, she has her brain cancer awareness, and we, we fight this every day. Uh, those of us who have had breast cancer and are survivors and who have other cancers that we have survived, and we walk in the walks and we do the talk. And that's what you have to do. And Columbus Mayor is the best city in the world that I could ever imagine <coughs> raising my family working and living. Thank you. Well, it's uh, pretty incredible to think about the fact that, you know, you know, Fran Ryan and, and Janet Jackson uh, took their old a couple of years back and it may have been newsworthy might have been uh, out of the ordinary but it's because they took those oaths and they served the way they served that now when President Pro Tem Tyson Councilmember Liz Brown Judge Paley Judge Moorhart Senator Kunze take their oaths it's not that out of the ordinary anymore and that's uh, something we all can be proud of well, friends, this is a pretty distinguished group of our neighbors, some of the greatest servants in different respects and accomplished in so many different ways, all guided by giving back and making this community a very special place. So, friends, there are now 63, 63 members of the Columbus Hall of Fame, a very special group. And today we are thrilled to recognize uh, these four new inductees. So to them, those that nominated them, their families, all that helped them do what they have done. Uh, on behalf of a grateful city, we say thank you. Thank <laughs> you.